Hi guys, good to be back. Today we're gonna dive in into an epic showdown with a lens brand that has been intriguing me since the beginning of my career, but never really quite made it to my main lens. Until now, this lens in question is the Samyang 50mm f1.4 SE Mark II. Alright guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the portrait videos because it was shot entirely with this lens. So first thing first, let's talk about the economy and designs of this lens. So as you can see, this lens looks pretty slick. It looks like a bad mobile. It has those micro patterns rubber focus ring around the lens and it feels very great to operate. It's weather sealed so you can take it out to any conditions without much worry. It's not made out of metals, but it does made out with some nice quality plastics. It feels lightweight, but sturdy. Perfect for long shoot, I would say. The lens slicks minimal designs with its matte flinchings and red accents looks killer on any Sony email camera. One of my favorite features, the custom buttons. So it lets you toggle between the function like a manual focus and aperture control with ease. You can customize the button, but you need a Samyang dock to do it. The focus ring is wide texture, it gives you comfortable grip and smooth, but not always accurate. Operation due to its focus by wire systems, which I'm going to show you later. In terms of weight, it's just 420 grams, which is pretty lightweight, compact and portable. It has a metal mouse, assure a secure connection to your camera, and it comes with 9 blitz diaphragms with a wide open aperture of f1.4 to create a beautiful bokeh. But how does it really perform? All right, now I should be comparing this with the Sony GM F1.4 or probably the Sigma F1.4. Unfortunately, I do not have those on hand. However, I have something even more fun. The best of the best, Sony GM F1.2 lens. It's not really a fair comparison, but trust me, the result might surprise you. So first off, let's talk about the image quality. The first thing I noticed is the focal view. The Sony GM F1.2 seems a little bit wider compared to Samyang. I don't see any visible distortions or vignetting in either lens at wide open f1.4. One of the biggest difference is definitely the color. The Samyang seems to be a little bit warmer and there's no right and wrong answer for that. It's pretty subjective. But when it comes to a chart test, the first thing I notice is the chromatic aberrations. Zooming at the center, the Samyang is sharp but shows a little bit of chromatic aberration and ghosting around the edge. The sharpness and chromatic aberration get worse at the edge. On the other hand, the Sony GM lens performs superior good from center to the edge, definitely outclassing the Samyang lens. At f1.8, the same issue persists with both lenses, but at f2.8, the Samyats get better. There's not much chromatic aberration and ghosting at the center, even compared to the Sony GM. However, there's some chromatic aberrations of center. The edge is definitely acceptable. In contrast, the Sony GM is very clean and clear. At f4, both lenses perform similar when zooming to 200%. The Sony GM lens has a tiny bit more contrast, but you can't really tell the difference when you zoom out 200%. At the edge of both lenses perform very well. There's no visible difference. At f5.6 and f8, both lenses perform very well. The only noticeable difference is the color, with the Sanyang appearing a bit warmer compared to the Sony GM. Next up, let's talk about bokeh. At f5.6, the Sony GM has rounder bokeh, thanks to its 11 aperture blades. In contrast, the Samyang lens has only 9 blades. Stepping down to f4 and f2.8, the Sony GM does a better job. The Samyang is also good in terms of bokeh quality, with no onion ring effects or the chromatic aberrations. However, there's some chromatic aberrations and softens at f1.8 and wider. I must say, the Sony GM lens really keeps up all the quality checks. I also did a quick flare test. The lens Samyang has a slight disadvantage in terms of this. There's a little flare leaks at the corner of the frame, but the warm color tones give a pleasant overall colors, which are pretty okay with that. 
Now, let's talk about performance. Autofocus, speed test, manual focus, focus breathing, and accuracy. I believe the image quality produced by the Samyang lens is pretty decent for the price points. However, there's nothing perfect, especially when it comes to three times cheaper. I've set both cameras to the same standard focus speeds and tracking. The Samyang falls back behind quite a bit compared to the Sony GM. The Sony GM is more accurate and snappier when it comes to focus touch. In tracking tests, both lenses perform quietly. The Samyang has a slower response when subject is closer, but it's not too bad if you don't go with close focus. The autofocus speeds of the Samyang is decent. Running short might be a little bit struggles, but usable for most cases like a march in, walk in, walk towards a camera. In a real world scenario, the Samyang lens struggle in darker environments. We were able to get some shots, but 30-40% of the time, they were out of focus. All right, let's go to the real world test. No lens comparisons would be complete without a practical test. So I use the Samyang lens in a photo shoot and video shoot to see how it really performs. Taking photo with this lens is just nice. I love the handle weight and definitely the f1.4 aperture. In the lab test, the bokeh might not be the best, but in a real world scenario, I don't think it's a deal breaker. You will still get that nice, smooth, creamy bokeh, and most people couldn't even notice the flaws of it. Sharpness wise, it's sharp if you know how to use it. To be honest, you wouldn't notice significant difference between this and the Sony GM f1.2. I've shot a wedding with our team using the Sony 50mm and the Sony GM at the same time. Now, let's guess which was shot with the Samyang and which with the Sony. As you can see, there wasn't a big difference between these two lenses. Yes, we'll get a little bit warmer cast with the Samyang lens compared to the Sony, but it's manageable in post. In terms of video performance, because it's lighter, I tend to use this lens more than the GM. For me, I don't shoot wide open every time. I'm a person who is willing to sacrifice the shallow depth of field more than the sharpness of the image. But it's always nice to have a wider aperture for low light situations. To sum things up, the Samyang AF 50mm f1.4 Mark II performs way better than I was expected. And you can see, you'll never go wrong with this lens. It delivers excellent values for its price, showing minimal differences in a real world test used with some expensive lenses like a GM. Especially in video quality, the Sony GM is the best choice if budget is not a concern for you, offering superior performance and deep qualities. But at the third price of the Samyang, for the most users, the Samyang will be a satisfying choice. It's lightweight, it works, and produces great image quality. Anyway, thanks for joining me in this adventure. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, or even like this video. Until next time, create, learn, and have fun. I'll see you guys in the next video.